Hey guys, welcome back to the Math is Simple YouTube channel. And today we are, this is the part two of our series of identifying solutions of systems. Our goal is to tell whether the ordered pair negative two, one is a solution of the given system. And when it says is a solution, that means does that point negative two, one fall on that line of that equation? So let's go ahead and get some practice. First of all, let's go ahead and write our two equations down. My first equation is 2x minus 3y equals a negative 7. I'm going to separate these two equations. And the second equation is 3x plus y equals a negative 5. Now we can see that our x value, I always get in the habit of labeling our x value and our y value in an ordered pair. It's just a habit, but it's a good habit. So students don't mix up the two. And so when they see it visually, and also I like color coding all of my, my work just to make it very understandable and for you so you can pick it up quickly. And so math can become simple for you. So I'm gonna replace the variable x with parentheses so we can plug in our values. And so here we go. X value is a negative two and our Y value is a positive one. So negative two times a negative, or excuse me, two times a negative two is a negative four. And then we have this subtraction belongs to the three. And so that's a negative three times one is a negative three. Therefore, does negative four and a negative three equal a negative seven? The answer is yes, because I have four negatives here and I have three negatives. And when I combine that together, I have seven negatives. So it's a negative seven and therefore Yes, this is a solution. So the point negative two, one is, will fall on the line that is constructed by two X minus three Y equals negative seven. So let's go ahead and try the second equation. Replacing once again, the variables with parentheses. And so we have three times a negative two, because this is my X value. Here's my Y value and my Y value is one. So three times a negative two is a negative six plus one. And does that, it looks like it equals negative six negatives and one positive. So negative six plus one is a negative five. And so yes, this two falls on my line. So here's my line for my first equation, my line for the second equation, and this falls at the point of intersection where negative two, one will fall right there on both lines. All right, cool, let's try another one. That was great. You guys are getting this. I have a feeling that you are picking this up rather quickly. Let's just work on our skills of making sure we plug in our um, answers or our ordered pair correctly, that we put our parentheses down and replace those parentheses with the variables um, or replace the variables with the parentheses. So here we go. Here are our two equations. I try to put them side by side with each other just so I don't get them confused. Also, I try to be as organized and in my equations, making sure my equal signs are lined up with each other. So once again, let's replace these variables with parentheses. See that equal sign is in line with each other. And let's go ahead and plug in the variable one. It's right here for X and the variable or the, the point Y or the ordered pair Y. Excuse me, let's say that again. In the ordered pair, the Y value is a negative four. I was trying to go a little too fast there. So X is one, we'll go ahead and bring that down. And we have a negative two and a negative four that gives me a positive eight. 
right away we see that one plus eight is nine, therefore nine does not equal eight, therefore it's not a solution. So one thing that we can see is that once we know that one of the points or one of the um, linear functions does not have that point, there's no possible way for a point of intersection. And so we could just stop the problem and just explain that there is going to be no solution, there's no point of intersection, okay? Let's just do this problem for fun, just so we can get practice plugging in our ordered pair into the equation. So here we go. We're gonna put a one there. And then we're going to put a negative 4. So 4 times 1 is 4. Negative and a negative is a positive. Positive 4. Well, this second one is on the line, but it's going to be on the line all by itself. So here we have our first line. Here we have our second line. And it looks like it, it might be 1, negative 4, could be over here or over here, depending on how we graphed it on the coordinate plane, but it does not fall on the first line of our examples. We have one more example, and then we will conclude this video, and you guys would have amazing practice, and you guys are gonna be pros at this by the time that you finish. Here we go. Our variable, our coordinate, the X coordinate is five, the y coordinate is 2, and we have 2x plus y equals 12, and a negative 3y minus x equals a negative 11. Let's go ahead this y. Let me clean up this y here just a little bit. There we go. Now let's replace our variables with parentheses just so I can get in a habit of being very organized with my equations. I think students tend to mess up because they are writing the equations all over the place and all the steps all over the place that they kind of lose where you're going. So practice keeping those, those equal signs in line with each other all the way down. So two times five is 10 plus two equals, yes, absolutely, 12 equals 12. Therefore, it's a big fat yes that the point five two is on this line. Let's see if it's on the second line. And if it's on the second line, we have identified the solution to the system. So we're plugging everything in. And so we need to have our y value. This is our y value. So it changed it up a little bit. So I need to move this arrow right over here because that's red is my x value. Now my y value is blue. So we have to be very careful. I almost messed up right there. So our y value is blue. So that is going to be a two. I thought it was gonna be in blue. Uh, okay, right there. And then the x value is 5. So here we go. Negative 3 times 2 is a negative 6. Negative times 5 is a negative 5. That should be a negative 1 right there. It's imaginary 1. If there's nothing, no number on the outside, that 1's there. We just don't put it. And it looks like we found a solution to this system? And the answer, of course, is yes. Now that we have both equations a yes, that says right away that this point of intersection is going to fall right here, and that's going to be the point 5, 2. All right, guys, that was great. That was a lot of fun. And I hope by the end of this video, you guys feel extremely confident that you know how to identify solutions of systems. And if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, hit the bell notifications, 
smash a like. I totally appreciate it. And share this video with your friends to help them be able to identify solutions of systems because math is simple and with practice, you guys will agree.